Hi, and welcome to Glaciation Map Work. In this question, you'll be asked to find the features of the landscape that provide evidence of glaciation having taken place. The first feature to find is a corrie. Corries are most easily identified by the word corrie on the map, underlined there. The next feature to look for is the C shape of contours, that's classic in identifying them. There's three given to you. And finally, a tarn, though you must remember that a tarn does not already, always exist inside a corrie. And there's a tarn pointed out to you there. If you've found corries, then your next logical step is to point out an arete. Now, the cliffs that surround a corrie, I should have mentioned those, cliffs also surround corries very frequently. Those cliffs join between two corries to form an arete. And I'll point out two to you, one here and one here. The second corrie forming this arete is this corrie here. OK, once you've found a corrie and you've found an arete, the next logical step is to look for a pyramidal peak. For that to happen, you need three corries back to back. So using my map evidence of corrie and big C shape of contours and cliffs all around, and another corrie up here, again with cliffs all around it in that classic C shape and the word corrie, um, I've got one, I've got two, and I've got three corries back to back. So somewhere in this triangle, I should find a pyramidal peak. And I find one, if you look very closely at your map, there. You'll see there's a trig point, you'll see there's a spot height, and indeed the peak has a name. All evidence come together to suggest a pyramidal peak. The next features to look for are a U-shaped valley. Now there is a U-shaped valley flat bottom here, point X. I know this is a U-shaped valley because there are the areas lacking in contours, indicating flat land. It's long and it's thin, indicating a long valley. And furthermore, to each side there are steep rising slopes, densely packed contours. Now once you find your U-shaped valley, then you can move on to find a truncated spur. Truncated spur would be found here, the second point X. I know this is a truncated spur, one, because it's alongside the U-shaped valley, two, because it's a large flat plane of rock. The contours don't indicate many valleys here. This is just a large flat hillside and rising very steeply and sharply, indicating a hill that has been truncated during glaciation. For further information, see the U-shaped valley formation video. The next feature to identify is a hanging valley. Now, it's tempting sometimes to go for a hanging valley based on the fact that it says waterfall. Don't necessarily fall into this trap. A hanging valley needs to be, as is this one, falling very sharply to the valley floor. You could argue that this is a hanging valley here. The water is falling very sharply towards the valley floor. So the key things to look for are water that's falling, but don't be fooled just because it says waterfall. You're looking for water passing th down a great height in a very short distance. Hanging valleys have to be hanging precipitously over the edge of the U-shaped valley. OK. Uh, the final feature to look for in a U-shaped valley is the ribbon lake, as that is a feature of glacial erosion. And the easiest way to do that is to follow your misfit stream until you hit a large body of water. So we've found ribbon lake, hanging valley, truncated spur, U-shaped valley, corrie, arete, um, and pyramidal peak. Remember, you'll gain an additional two marks for proper use of grid references throughout. OK, I hope that's helped. Try replaying the clip and pausing it just before I put any annotations on and seeing if you can identify these and other features for yourself. I've left quite a few unmarked. I hope that helped.